Perhaps my favorite thing about creating using GarageBand on the iPhone or the iPad is the ability to create and mix your tracks wherever you go. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I mix my tracks while I'm on the go. So let's go. Yes, I have my coffee. I'm on my walk to work on a beautiful spring morning here in Adelaide. So as I walk along, I'm going to be mixing or listening to and mixing this song and I'll stop and let you know what I'm doing and any tips along the way as we go. Oh, and before we get started here, a couple of quick words. The audio is gonna be in mono because I'm gonna use my screen recorder to record it. And also, make sure that if you are mixing on the go like this, that you stop to do your mix move. So I'll be listening to the tracks, but I'll actually be stopping to do my mixing because I don't wanna run into any poles and I don't want you to do the same. So here we are back in our GarageBand track. Now, before we get into the actual mixing, I wanna preemptively answer a couple of questions that you may have. Number one is, why would I choose to actually mix while I'm walking around? Well, there's a few reasons. Number one is around a work-life family music balance so I happen to have an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon where I'm walking to and from my day job so that just gives me an hour where I can dedicate to music number two which is related to that is it helps me mix with my ears not with my eyes so because I'm actually listening to the tracks as I walk along and I have to not run into poles and trees then I can actually listen with my ears a lot more and not worry about what I'm looking at so much and number three is I actually don't mind the background noise because for me it gives me a bit more of a realistic uh, sound so yes it's not that perfect pristine environment but no one's listening in perfect pristine environments these days so I actually don't mind that and the other related question is why mix on headphones well I covered that in a recent video which you can check out I'll link up the top and down in the description but it's more of a convenience thing really is that I have a lot of time where I have headphones and earbuds and as long as you factor in some of the things which I'll talk about in a moment around some of the bass build up you may get then headphones can be a perfectly viable option anyway that's enough preemptive let's jump in and start talking about mixing here in this track. So let's break down what we have in this track. We have two guitars here panned left and right, though you won't be able to hear that in the mono mix. And by the way, I will put a stereo version of the final mix at the end. So don't worry about that if you want to hear the panning and how that's going to impact things, but there's going to be limited panning in this song anyway. We've then got a third guitar, which is playing a little bit of a, a bass guitar part, but not an acoustic. We have our lead vocal. We have this little bass bit, which is actually a little bit of a beatbox style bass, which we'll show you in a moment. And we have a drummer track. So we have six tracks of audio and then we have our FX track. Now I use the FX track not to add FX funnily enough but actually to use it as a master volume and a master EQ which I can do here in the visual EQ. Now I won't show that here because I have a video, two videos in fact, all about that and those will be linked up the top and down in the description right now. So if you want to learn how to do that you can do that now or at the end of the video. So that's our layout of our track. Now let's take a listen to what the track sounds like right now before we start our mix process. Actually, I will show you one thing really quickly here with the FX track, and that is that what I've done here, you'll notice here that I've actually reduced, I've given the bass a cut here at around 200 hertz, just a couple of dB, and I've also reduced the overall gain or volume of the track by a few dB as well. Now, I've done that because mixing on headphones, I tend to overdo things, and I tend to be too heavy-handed with the bass, so just dropping that down right now actually tends to help my overall mix. Won't work on every track, on every track you use, but it's worth considering whether you need to make those moves and it just means I don't have to go and do that on every individual track I can do that on the master FX track here and give myself a head start okay now let's take a quick listen to the six tracks as we have them at the moment here on our song I cross the road and never even look one way I always seem to know the perfect thing to say And I don't even wave at other cars when I pass by So there's a couple of things you might notice right up front. The first is that we already have a bit of a static mix done. That means that we've mixed the volumes of each of these tracks so that they're sitting at about the right level. Number two is that there's already quite a bit of processing on this track. So I tend to mix on the way in quite a lot. So I've already got some effects, a little bit of EQ, and I'm actually using my master effects, which is probably my little secret source that I use here in GarageBand. So let's show you now how I set up and use master effects to shortcut the mixing process here in GarageBand. So you might already be aware that there are two ways we can add effects here in GarageBand. We can add track effects by coming in here to our mixer icon, going to plugins and EQ, and then editing here. And we can add in different types of track delay, track reverb, and a bunch of other effects in there. But there's another place, and that is our master effects down the bottom here. So you can see here we've got our master echo and our master reverb. Now if we tap on this, we can dial in 
One type of echo, I've chosen quarter note echo for this song, and one type of reverb, I've got the medium hall reverb. And then what we can do is dial in a different amount of those to each of our tracks. So if I go through each track here, you can see my guitars have a certain amount there. My other guitar has a bit less because that's like a bass guitar part. And then my vocals have got quite a bit of reverb and a little bit of echo on them as well. And then even my drums have quite a bit of echo and reverb. So that is kind of my secret sauce and my, uh, my shortcut to adding effects here in GarageBand. Is to use your master effects first and then go in and adjust anything you need to do on the track. Because just some simple delay and echo can give you a really good head start on your tracks here in GarageBand. So to reinforce this point, some might say labor this point, what I've done here is I've gone through and removed all of the master effects from this track. And what I thought I would do is I'd play a version of this without any of those master effects, and then I'll switch back to the other version and you'll hear that you get an instant boost and an instant better mix just by using a little bit of master effects. So let's play this without effects first. I spend a fortune but I never pay the child I just don't give a damn when I make other people mad and I throw And now back to our version with our master effects Throw my fellow humans under buses when I can It's doggy dog out there so why not man eat man and all my so you can hear there that just having that little bit of master reverb, master echo, it is just adding and gluing that mix together. And then what we can do now, which we will do, is go in and tweak our track effect settings and our compression to make sure that we've got a really good balance right throughout our track. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go through every single track and show you every single plugin and effect that I actually put on there. Even though it's only six tracks, that would still take a long time and be an hour plus video. If you do wanna see that video, let me know and we'll see what we can do. But I'm assuming you just wanna get some basic information and move on. If you do wanna learn about all of the effects, check out my GarageBand Quick Jam series. I go through each and every individual plugin and effect in that and tell you how to use those. That'll be linked up above and down below right now. But the two things I get asked about more than anything is visual EQ and compression. So I am gonna spend a little bit of time now just showing you some of my EQ and compression moves that I've made to make this track sound good. Now, firstly, to demonstrate EQ, I'm gonna use these stereo acoustic guitars because what I actually am finding is that I, I, I might've mentioned in one of the other videos, I really need to change the strings on my acoustic. So what I'm actually lacking here is a bit of brightness in the top end of the guitar that you'd get from some fresher strings. So it's sounding a little bit dull. Let's take a listen to the guitar as it is with no EQ moves. So it's not bad, but you can probably hear it's a little bit flat and dead. So what happens if we come in here? Let's go to our plugins and EQ and our visual EQ, and let's just give this a boost of about five dB up here at five kilohertz. This is what we call just giving it some air. So just giving it a little bit of additional treble boost up there. We'll do the same on our other track. A little bit of a treble boost. And now let's play this back and see the difference. So all we've really done and all EQ is, is a volume boost at a particular frequency. So do you want your low to be louder or softer? Do you want your mids to be louder or softer? Do you want your high frequencies to be louder or softer? So in this case, I want my high frequencies to be slightly louder. So I'm turning up the volume of just the higher frequencies. And if we put this back in our mix now, then our guitars actually sit much nicer in our mix. Don't have the time, you know I'm such a special guy And all my friends are telling me In fact, we might have gone a little bit too far But what I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll play with that And maybe just drop that down to maybe a 3 dB boost And this is what mixing and EQ adjustment is all about It's just about trial and error, trying things out Seeing what works and what fits in with your mix Now to demonstrate our compression The logical thing to use is probably our vocals so let's go into our effects here and go to plugins and eq and to our compressor now what you'll notice here is that i've been very heavy with the compression i've got my threshold down at minus 24 down here i've got the ratio up at nine to one and the attacks at 7.5 milliseconds i've got a 100 percent mixed in if those things don't mean much to you check out my compression video it'll be linked up above and down in the description as well i explain all about how to set compression but a lot of folks say to me, hey, what should my threshold be? What should my ratio be? And it, the answer, which frustratingly is, it depends. Because what your threshold is setting is at what volume it kicks in. Now, 
whatever volume you recorded your vocals at is going to determine at what volume you want your compressor to actually kick in the same with your ratio that is sort of how much is applied once the compressor kicks in how much compression is applied and i want a lot so i want it to kick in at a certain level and then i want lots of compression to be applied so let's play this back now with its current compression what i'll do is i'll dial up the threshold which basically means it's going to kick in less and you'll hear the difference in the track I crossed the road and never even looked one way I always seem to know the perfect thing to say And I don't even wave it up so you can hear there that it just gets buried and lost in the mix because what a compressor does is it reduces the peaks and you're saying pete how does that make it louder what it does is it actually lifts the overall volume it's got some makeup gain built into the compressor here but what it does it's sort of chopping off the top so it's bringing the overall level up by reducing down the peaks so that you're not having really loud bits and really quiet bits you're having a consistent performance so compression is the first stage well volume's the first stage compression is the second stage of your volume for your vocals the final stage is your automation which is the last thing that i'll show you because i do automation absolutely last but there you go that's a quick crash course in the compressor settings i realize i didn't go into a lot of detail about that as i said i've got those other videos that will show you that but experiment with your compressor change your settings around and you might have noticed the one other tip with this don't set it in isolation what a lot of folks do is they'll come in here they'll solo their vocal and they'll play it back other cars when i pass by don't have the time you know I'm and they'll dial in their compression and the same goes for almost every effect don't put your effects on in isolation because you're never going to listen to it no one's going to go hey I bet that vocal sounds really good soloed without any other tracks no they're going to listen to it in the mix so add your effects in the mix do your compression with it in the mix and you'll get a good result most if not every time. Okay, so I've neglected this little bass track down here, and there's a reason for that, it's quite embarrassing. No, um, what this is, is this is, I was originally going to play this on a bass guitar, or maybe use the virtual upright bass, but I just couldn't either get the time or get the coordination to play it. So in the end, I actually just sang my bass line, and it sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> So yeah, quite comical, right? But when you add that into the mix, we'll do that now. It's not actually present, so you can't actually even really hear it, but what it is, it's just adding that something that you can't quite hear. And this is an important part of not only mixing, but arranging, is that you don't have to just focus on things that you can really clearly hear in the mix. You want some things that people are just like, oh, I think I hear a little touch of bass there. And to me, it just, adds a little bit of bass where there isn't any because apart from the the drums there's really nothing else in that sort of lower acoustic that we have here which we also haven't really talked about there's not really much in the way of bass so i just wanted to show you that because that's just one other little instrument that we've got here in this track okay so i hope you're still with me and that the wind noise and the car noise hasn't been too distracting i'm quickly realizing that whilst there's no reason why you shouldn't mix your tracks on the go there's probably a good reason why you shouldn't record a video about mixing your tracks on the go anyway the final thing we're going to talk about here before I go away and finish my mix and come back and show it to you is automation now I've talked about automation a lot here on the channel and I have a heap of videos as always which I will link down in the description so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail but a quick refresher or crash course here we're going to tap on our microphone we're going to go automation and then to add in automation points we slide our slider here and we tap along our uh, track here we turn that off and then we can adjust these up and down so that we can turn the volume of the track up and down and the reason we do automation is that a static volume is going to be okay but it's not going to be the right for the entire song so you might have bits where you've sung a bit too softly a bit too loud and you want to manually automate sounds weird right manually automate but you want to put in automation points so that your volume will automatically go up and down in those points so what i do my ta tactic or technique for this is that i will listen to the whole track through and i'll take notes i'll say okay this word needs to go up this phrase needs to go down i'll go in i'll add my automation points i'll listen again i'll say yep that was good but this one needs to change now so i'll do about three or four passes until i'm happy that my automation is right so rather than doing it in isolation and doing bits here and there listen to your whole track take your notes go back in i find that's the best way to get a nice balanced automated volume track so i'm going to go away and do that now and we'll come back with what is going to be close to a finished mix 
Okay, so I have gone away. I've done all my automation. Let's check in on it. I'll tap there. I'll go automation. You can see here that I've removed some of the breaths that I had in there. I've upped a couple of phrases. I haven't really done a heap here. I wanted to keep it pretty organic, but these little tweaks are just going to give the vocal a more level sound in our final finished product, which I'm close to showing you here before I go ahead and play back the song in its entirety. And you can take a listen to what the mix sounds like now just to let you know this is probably not the final mix because there is one thing i do need to do now walking around and listening and on earbuds is okay but where possible it's good to reference your mixes i've talked about this before i will be taking this mix back i'll be playing it through my speakers through my home stereo and listening in because i've probably got some eqing of some bass some treble i've probably got some things that are not quite right and i would like you to help me out too if you are listening back to this track i'm going to play it in full stereo as good as youtube can play it at the end here so take a listen and let me know what you think and if you've got suggestions for this track we've got a couple of days left before i'm going to master the track and then get it released so let me know what you think give me any feedback that you have about the track but now without any further ado here is never to blame in its entirety the road and never even look one way I always seem to know the perfect thing to say and I don't even wave at other cars when I pass by don't have the time you know I'm such a special guy and all my friends are telling me that I should be ashamed but I'm not even listening cause I'm never to blame I spend a fortune but I never pay the tab I just don't give a damn when I make other people mad And I throw my fellow humans under buses when I can It's doggy dog out there so why not man eat man And all my friends are telling me that I might be insane But I'm not even listening cause I'm never to blame And people tell me that I'm such a selfish little man But they're just jealous of the way I get just what I want And everyone is saying I'll regret it in the end They keep saying karma's catching up with you, my friend And I don't hear it when they laugh at me and tell me you're so vain It might take two to tango, baby, but I'm never to blame so this seems like a pretty appropriate place to finish up the video. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions about this track or anything else, you can leave those down below, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I'll be back with the mastering process really soon. In the meantime, you can check out all of the videos I referenced in this one down in the description below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon, or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio 